You're tuned in to the Business Intelligence Network. Thank you for joining us. I'm Claudia Imhoff, and we're here today at the Data Warehousing Institute Conference in a beautiful downtown Chicago. Now joining me today is Eve de Mishoya. Eve is the VP of Marketing for Talon. Thanks for joining me, Eve. Hello, Claudia. Thanks for having me. It's nice to have you back here. Now let's talk about where Talon fits into the overall business intelligence environment. And more generally, how does it fit into the overall data integration market? Well, as you said, Thailand, we are uh, an open source data integration vendor, and uh, data integration is an integral component of business intelligence. You need to uh, extract data from your multiple operational databases, applications, ERPs, files, and other systems. You need to transform them and to load them into your BI applications, into your data warehouses, into your data maps and whatnot. So in that sense, Talent fits into the overall BI stack by providing all the data components of uh, data warehousing and business intelligence. Now, as far as data integration is concerned, well, you know that data integration is broader than just ETL for business intelligence. So we also provide data synchronization, data replication, data migration, you know, pretty much like many other vendors do in, uh, in that market. All right, well now, as you mentioned, Talent is an open source data integration solution. So is that new? Is, is there something different about being an open source data integration uh, provider? How does that differ from the more traditional folks there, the well, traditional vendors? I would say yes and no. Mm -hmm. um, no in the sense that open source data integration solution, pretty much like uh, other data integration solutions, provide services to, you know, get the data, transform it, uh, load it into Traditional targets. ETL or ELT, abs whichever way you want to look at it. Absolutely, on both <laughs> ETL and ELT. And we mm -hmm. provide a nicely designed user interface in order to design your processes. At runtime, we will generate a program either in Java or Perl that you can deploy to as many systems as possible. Now, we are different, yes, in our approach to the development cycle of the product and our approach to the market. Open source means that all our development cycles are completely open. Anybody can access the source code, can access our bug tracking system, mm -hmm. can access mm -hmm. our forums, our wiki. So we, we are completely, uh, completely visible in that sense. Open source also means that our users can download the core product for free. They can install it, they can use it, they can deploy it in production without even having to talk to us, without having to pay licenses from mm -hmm. us. Of course, we are not a, a charitable organization. <laughs> you have to we make are, money somehow. We are in there for, to make business. So open source is just a different way of approaching the market, where most of the users get the free product, don't pay for it, and will only pay when they need, for example, technical support, when they need training. Now, a certain number of enterprise users will need additional capabilities mm -hmm. which are not included in the open source product. And for those additional features like a shared repository, uh, like enterprise deployment capabilities with automated load balancing, mm -hmm. with monitoring and whatnot, those are commercial features that we provide under a subscription license with a yearly subscription. Okay. Open source is under discussion in a lot of organizations. It mm -hmm. seems like a lot of people are talking about open source. <coughs> do, you, do you think that enterprises are ready to adopt an op open source model? Well, they are more than ready. I was actually talking recently with the CIO of a large bank in New York, and he was telling me, you know, if I don't care whether your solution is open source or it's not open source. All I want mm -hmm. it is to work in my environment. The capability. I want the backing of a vendor will stand behind his product and will be able to provide technical support, will be able to provide uh, intellectual property identification if a lawsuit were, were to arise. And all that stuff we do provide to the exact same extent as a commercial vendor. What we provide that commercial vendors don't provide is complete openness on the cycles, a complete transparency on the pricing model, uh, complete capability for the user to customize the software, to add connectors to specific sources on targets, for example. In some uh, domains, actually, being open source is actually an, a clear advantage over some uh, commercial proprietary solutions. For example, many government institutions in Europe have made it mandatory to uh -huh. look for an open source solution first. And if no open source solution meets the need, then you can buy commercial software, but you have to prove 
that you have done your due diligence and that you could not find an open, an open source product. Now, that's not always the case, obviously, and many corporations uh, don't really differentiate between open source and commercial. They just look at the overall cost of the software, the overall cost of the project. They do an ROI analysis, and very often open source comes in a, in a very good position. Well, now, maybe you can help me out a little bit here by describing which other open source systems you encounter in your clients' environments. Are there, are there other open source vendors that they already have? There is a lot of open source in all enterprises. Now, it's true that if you look back a few years, most of the uh, open source software you could find was on the infrastructure side, you know, like web server, application server, uh, databases, uh, operating system, obviously. Now, what we've seen in the past few years is really open source going up the stack with more and more business applications being open source, thinking of ERPs, mm -hmm. thinking of CRM application, thinking, of course, of business intelligence applications, and, of course, all the middleware that goes with it. And data integration is a key component of, uh, of this entire open source stack. Now, what we find also is that no enterprise is full open source or is full proprietary. You find a combination of both types of models in the enterprise. Mm -hmm. And all of those technologies need to interoperate. And that's really what data integration is for. You need to get your open source CRM uh, for example, Sugar CRM to communicate with your proprietary SAP ERP, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and you got Oracle databases and MySQL databases and Postgres databases, and you know you might have a data warehouse appliance such as Paraxel, for example, and all of those uh, applications and systems need to exchange data, and because of that, data integration need to be pervasive and to integrate and communicate with all those systems and many more, which is why Thailand has 250 connectors to all systems out there. Wow. And its openness makes it possible for our customers to add to that number mm -hmm. of connectors and to build their own connectors if they need to. That's also the strength of the open source it's model. Part of the open source model, indeed. indeed. Yeah. Well, now you've talked about a number of advantages of open source. Let's get specific about open source in terms of data integration.